Ukraine uh, have been a known country, but now Ukraine uh, is, is a different world for everyone. We successfully survived because we have uh, enough money on our bank accounts. Using those tools, we maintain our operations. This will drive many projects to Ukraine. Please give me permission uh, to pay salaries for six months. It's about people uh, it's it's about support, uh, so it's about good values. Within a little more than a decade, Ukraine has become a major global hub for patient recruitment. But today, the country is going through tremendously difficult times. While hundreds of clinical trials have been disrupted and the patients are standing to lose their treatment, there is hope, however. In this episode of Industry Voice, I will have the pleasure of talking to Yuri Levitz, the CEO of Pharmaxi, a CRO based in Ukraine. A CRO, which has been making sure that the clinical trials are running and that the patients keep receiving their treatment. Hello, Yuri. First of all, thank you for agreeing to come to our show. We've been impressed with your story and what you and your team have been doing to revive clinical research in Ukraine during these difficult times. Thank you very much for invitation. Uh, it's a good time for me to speak with you and to spread the word uh, about Ukraine, uh, about our resistance and uh, how we uh, live in business space and business context. Uh, and uh, maybe we can uh, say something uh, useful or valuable for other companies uh, to, to understand how they can survive if some uh, some crises or some challenges will happen uh, if it will happen some someday. So let's start with the current situation. Are all clinical trial activities in Ukraine on hold or something is going on? Uh, you know, in Ukraine, we have uh, several big players uh, and uh, many international CROs uh, operate here and uh, uh, they have hundreds of employees here, uh, and uh, they started uh, hundred clinical trials. Uh, so it was a very uh, active uh, uh, landscape uh, and market here, uh, and the many activities performed in Ukraine for the majority of different uh, therapeutic uh, fields. Uh, and uh, we have uh, multiple uh, trained sites and uh, CRAs and experts in, in, in clinical trial field. Um, but uh, when war uh, started, uh, everything was on hold. Uh, so new trials uh, have not been uh, launched for, for months. And uh, as I know, uh, the ongoing trial just continuing uh, and uh, already enrolled patients in the study uh, and they continue uh, to collect data on those patients. Uh, and as I uh, also know, uh, people which are employed in uh, international CROs, uh, they can do some remote uh, work for different uh, countries and locations. Uh, so, in, in general, uh, this is the general picture, uh, but as we say about Formoxy, uh, we, we cannot compete with gigantic CROs, we are just a small or middle-sized Ukrainian CRO, uh, but uh, we, uh, we were able to accommodate and to adapt uh, to this situation, uh, and we started, uh, we have started three clinical trials. Uh, within the uh, past uh, several months. Uh, and uh, I would say that Formaxi now is a single CRO, uh, which submitted clinical trial to State Expert Center. And uh, we, uh, we started new projects uh, here. And uh, maybe this is the, the sign of uh, our uh, adaptation and flexibility. So Ukraine, without doubt, has been one of the major destinations for clinical trial patient enrollment for years. From your point of view, how is the current situation affecting the global clinical research landscape? I suppose that, that the global uh, landscape is changing uh, because 
uh, Ukraine wants to be involved, uh, but uh, sponsors and the big CROs uh, don't want to take these risks and uh, uh, responsibilities, and it's obvious uh, some level of risk uh, even today. Uh, so Ukraine is not, not in the game right now. Uh, and uh, as I know, uh, Russia uh, is under massive sanctions and many companies uh, decided to stop uh, R&D and clinical research activities there. Uh, and Russia uh, was a, a big player in clinical trials, uh, also uh, enrolled many patients and uh, uh, it was a big location. And uh, I suppose that uh, from, from day to day, those uh, questions about uh, renovation or reactivation of clinical trials in Ukraine uh, they are on the table, uh, and uh, uh, personally, I try to publicly say that Ukraine uh, again uh, is in the game, and uh, we we have everything to start new clinical trials. Uh, we have many motivated uh, investigators and clinics, and uh, even yesterday, uh, I received a personal message via LinkedIn from the director of big private hospital. Uh, saying that uh, we know that Pharmaxi is a single CRO launch, uh, launching new trials, and uh, if uh, you will uh, you will be starting new clinical trial, please uh, contact us, and we will be ready to involve. Uh, so, uh, since since we started new trials, I would say that we decided and we resolved all problems with logistics. Uh, with uh, customs, uh, with laboratories, uh, and uh, uh, I, I hope that this voice someday uh, will will convince uh, decision makers to to start clinical trials in Ukraine again. And now I want to talk about Pharmaxi in particular. So you mentioned that you have been able to launch three new trials in Ukraine. Uh, and have you been receiving new requests for clinical services from international pharmaceutical companies? Yes, we, we do active uh, active promotion uh, of our services and uh, uh, we, uh, we signed uh, several contracts for remote service, for medical writing, for statistical programming, uh, for uh, statistical services. Uh, and it's easier to uh, to communicate with uh, sponsors that uh, this type of remote service could be delivered from Ukraine. Uh, and uh, also we, uh, we 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 have uh, uh, several requests from from sponsors about uh, the general possibility of launching clinical trial in Ukraine. Uh, but in addition to that, we have now. Um, uh, Pharmaxi Poland, uh, as 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 a part of uh, Pharmaxi, uh, Pharmaxi brand, uh, and uh, uh, sometimes uh, people uh, interested in clinical trial in Poland, uh, and uh, then when they decide, oh, it is expensive maybe, or it is too slow in terms of regulatory pr uh, procedures and everything, uh, sometimes we can say. Uh, this is the alternative and Ukraine is cheaper and here we have a much faster uh, approval process uh, and uh, uh, if, if you would like to mitigate risks uh, we can launch two uh, countries in, in a parallel mode uh, and uh, if something unexpected happened uh, in Ukraine this study could could be uh, uh, continued uh, in in Poland. And you mentioned Poland. Has it always been in your portfolio, or is it because of the current circumstances that you've been you've started considering new markets? Uh, I would say that for two or three years, we have been thinking about uh, uh, like legal entity in EU, uh, but uh, it was. Uh, not very urgent question for us. We, we, we have enough job uh, in Ukraine. Uh, but uh, when war started, we decided that uh, maybe Ukraine will be not attractive for sponsors for, for months or years. And we have to diversify uh, our geographical locations. And we decided to 
uh, make a new company in Poland. Uh, and we registered this company within several weeks uh, after the war began. And if we talk about the, the clinical trial in particular, have you been dealing with any protocol deviations and other consequences during the past year? Uh, yes, uh, th th those protocol uh, deviations have been linked with uh, some loss of contact with, with some patients uh, because it was massive uh, uh, internal relocation or uh, even uh, relocation of patients to, to other countries. Uh, so people have been just lost, uh, lost, lost to follow up and uh, uh, contacts have, have been broken. Uh, and in other cases, uh, we faced with uh, uh, delays, uh, and uh, many visits have been uh, executed not not in the, not in the right time. Uh, but it, it happened uh, during several uh, weeks uh, when it was uh, like general panic. Uh, no one uh, uh, no one knows what uh, what 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 is really what really happened. Uh, and what uh, will be in, in the next uh, several weeks. Uh, so uh, it was uh, like a big, big, big uncertainty for, for everyone. And everyone thought about his safety and many people had been relocated to Western part of Ukraine. Uh, and my family and me personally, we have been relocated for two months from Kiev to, to Lviv, uh, which, is, which is Western a part of Ukraine, uh, and then when uh, Kyiv region have been liberated, uh, then many people get back home, uh, and uh, uh, now uh, many, many, many uh, activities have been restored, and uh, uh, even traffic jam I face today when I uh, drive uh, to to office. Uh, so uh, life life is uh, getting back. So you can say that the clinical research is, is getting back on track in Ukraine. Yes. A lot of companies and a lot of people have been talking a lot about decentralized clinical trials. What can you say about the decentralized approach in the context of such unprecedented events? I would say that uh, it, it is the, the trend which, which saves uh, many data and, and safe clinical uh, safe clinical trials uh, because uh, when uh, subjects or patients are physically not not available, uh, decentralized clinical trial uh, can help patients to uh, to provide clinical data uh, remotely uh, or based on the uh, nurse service. And uh, I know that. For example, in, in Germany, in COVID-19 times, uh, those companies which uh, have been focused on uh, home nurse services, uh, those companies grew a, a lot uh, because uh, you know, many sponsors decided to, to use some elements of decentralized clinical trials uh, to collect uh, data remotely, uh, even to, to inject some, some medication at home. Uh, and uh, this uh, this decentralization uh, provides additional level of, of uh, resistance uh, or uh, additional level of flexibility or, or adaptation uh, to some unpredicted uh, problems. Uh, I mean, uh, problems with uh, physical um, uh, re relocation or uh, quarantine uh, or different restrictions. Uh, so. Uh, I think that this type of decentralized uh, trials uh, uh, trained uh, a lot uh, and uh, many uh, companies implemented uh, electronic systems and uh, electronic patient report outcomes like ePro systems uh, to remotely collect data. Uh, and uh, uh, as we say about uh, our company, uh, I would say that business-related decentralization, uh, which uh, happened in terms of uh, uh, COVID-19 times, uh, this lessons learned and this changes in our uh, business operations helps us a lot. Uh, when war uh, began and many employees have been located in different places, 
Uh, despite that, using those tools, we maintain our operations and we continue uh, to, to do our, uh, our processes and to deliver services, uh, even in the, the hardest time when everyone was in different region. And how would you say um, a life science company, for example, um, can mitigate the negative impact of events such like war or a global pandemic? I suppose that uh, the, the general logic uh, of, of the adaptation uh, is, about, um, is about decentralization and flexibility. Uh, for example, uh, I know that in, in some countries, uh, informed consent could be signed just personally uh, when patient uh, uh, visited uh, a hospital uh, and it is the obligatory uh, step to include patients to clinical study. Uh, and uh, uh, we know that uh, there is e-consent uh, application uh, and this e-consent application allows to read uh, informed consent form uh, by patient and uh, he can sign uh, this this informed consent remotely uh, using a tablet or, or other touch screen uh, and uh, traditional approach uh, in many countries say that oh it's not acceptable uh, you have to print paper you have to sign it by hands uh, and I, I think that this evolution to electronic uh, tools and to uh, e-consent, to e-pro, to EDC system, to, uh, to, to these tools, uh, this evolution gives additional level of, of adaptation. Uh, and uh, uh, I have a similar uh, vision of uh, why European world uh, successfully uh, resists to, uh, to pandemic. Uh, because in this year's remote tools uh, and uh, Zoom uh, teams and other platforms uh, save our communication. Uh, and th these tools uh, gives us opportunity to, to adjust and to adapt uh, to, to restrictions, you know. Uh, and I think that, that the key point is, is digitalization and innovation in clinical trials, and this enhances the, the level of resistance. Would you say that there is a difference in approach to trial risk assessment and management plan between times like COVID-19 and military conflict? I suppose that the pandemic uh, just changed a lot uh, the, the profile of clinical trials. Some trials uh, have not been uh, actual those times, and the COVID-19 trials uh, have been growing a lot. Uh, and uh, uh, here we, we have to say that those companies which, uh, which have been uh, internally flexible to adjust to, to new type of projects, they survive. And when MDR legislation uh, have been announced, uh, and medical device companies uh, started to uh, started many clinical trials. Those companies, which uh, which are really flexible, they they were able to to use and to enter to this market and to uh, deliver clinical trials for medical devices. So it's about internal flexibility of, of the company, and it is about the ability to learn. Uh, to, to new practices. So uh, it, it's about COVID-19 uh, adaptation. But if we, uh, we think about military conflict, uh, it is about, uh, it is about uh, some, uh, some resistance depending on the assets. Uh, and uh, we, we successfully survived because we have uh, enough money on our bank accounts. Uh, and uh, during the first uh, weeks, I can freely say, guys, uh, you, you cannot work. Please <clears throat> think about your safety. We will pay your salary. Uh, you are safe. You will not be starving. Uh, and uh, uh, this uh, uh, activities helped us to, to save company. And everyone understood that uh, company will pay 
uh, and everything will be good. Uh, so uh, military conflict and uh, uh, maybe uh, other type, maybe even earthquake is, is about assets, you know. It's again uh, the, the next type of crisis when we say about a source of crisis or nature of, of crisis, right? Uh, we, we have to think not about pandemic, we have to think about uh, earthquakes, uh, about uh, financial uh, crises and uh, to be resistant to different type of, of crises. Uh, companies should uh, collect some, some assets uh, to be able to, to accommodate and to win this time. Uh, when when they define how to earn uh, money uh, using additional and new tools. Yuri, thank you for sharing your approach. I think that our audience will learn a lot from you. Are there any other lessons uh, that other pharmaceutical or maybe other industry members can learn from the events happening in Ukraine or maybe even from your approach in dealing with such uh, situation? main lessons from lesson from this situation uh, is about uh, the strategy of how to react uh, on on the crisis uh, during first week or or first days or maybe first uh, uh, 10 days uh, and uh, i think that th that this is critical uh, and uh, i can imagine that uh, if we would be uh, big company with uh, uh, multiple investors uh, i think that if i would go to them and say uh, you know, please give me permission uh, to pay salaries for six months to employees uh, because it's a right it's a right decision it's about people uh, it's it's about support uh, so it's about good values uh, and it, it's about uh, humanity, you know, it's not about just numbers or money. Uh, and I can imagine that it would be a hard decision for uh, fi finance guys uh, or investors uh, or other stakeholders. Uh, maybe they would say, oh, no, uh, maybe we will stop activities. Maybe we will reduce salaries twice and uh, uh, everything. But I think that uh, this decision when we say to our employees that guys you will take your money for for six months no matter what no matter on number of new projects no matter of the the your load uh, so you will be safe and you will take this money uh, i think that this uh, uh, behavior uh, saved company uh, and uh, everyone uh, grateful right now to, to us uh, that we we think about people uh, but not about money during during the most critical days and on a closing note i would like to ask for your opinion in terms of the future of clinical development in ukraine what are your thoughts i think that ukraine will be a very prosperous country in terms of clinical trials i have my personal feeling of how Ukraine uh, sounded like two or three years ago. Uh, and it was really hard to uh, say that, guys, we are from Ukraine, we deliver a good level of quality, we have many patients, and uh, uh, please sign contract with us and we deliver good, good data and good quality for you. Uh, and it was not very convincing because Ukraine uh, have been a known country. Uh, no one knows about Ukraine, uh, and uh, it's it's about it's about like basic level of trust uh, and knowledge about country, about people, about values in, in this country. Uh, but now Ukraine uh, is 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 a different word for everyone uh, comparing to to those times. This will drive many projects to Ukraine. And I suppose that uh, the renovation and uh, investments to the economy uh, from Western venture funds, uh, from EU, from our government, these investments will be high. 
uh, and uh, the this this will be the the age of prosperity and i would like to to see this future for my country and yuri that would be all for today thank you so much for coming and sharing your insights and thoughts you are doing an incredible job so good luck with your current and of course with future clinical trials Thank you very much. And thank you for your questions. And it was a big pleasure talking to you. Likewise. Thank you for watching. If you would like to be our next guest speaker, reach out. You can find the right email in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe.